Let's talk about vegetable acid poisons now. Now why are they called vegetable acid poisons? Because of course they are present in many fruits and vegetables such as peach, plum, bitter almonds and leaves of cherry royal. Now they are basically two poisons. They are basically the same thing but different forms. One is hydrocyanic acid which is an acid of course and the other is cyanide which is the salt of the hydrocyanic acid. Now, how does cyanide cause toxicity? It does this by two ways. Firstly, it binds to the iron atom in cytochrome C oxidase and thus stops electron transport chain. It causes histotoxic or cytotoxic anoxia, that is, the blood is properly oxygenated but oxygen cannot be utilized. Second is its corrosive action on mucous membranes. Now some important properties of cyanide is mainly in three forms, a gas, an acid and a salt. The acid or the gas is colorless and it has a bitter almond penetrating odor. Now when hydron hydrocyanic acid reacts with a base of uh, any metal, it is converted into cyanide that is a salt and it is in the form of white powders. Another way, if we ingest cyanide, the HCl in the stomach converts it into hydrogen cyanide which is very poisonous gas. Now how does cyanide enter our body? It can enter readily and is readily absorbed through mucous membranes. It can be inhaled in its gaseous form and it is very toxic. And it can be ingested. And depending upon the amount of HCl present, it can be toxic or not so toxic. Let's see the signs and symptoms of cyanide poisoning now. There is acute toxicity and then there is chronic toxicity of course. In acute toxicity, it can occur in three ways. The gas can be inhaled or liquid hydrocyanic acid can be ingested or the salt cyanide can be ingested. If the gas which is hydrogen cyanide is inhaled, death occurs at the spot instantaneously. If liquid hydrocyanic acid is ingested, there can be instantaneous death with momentarily relief or delayed death. Instantaneous death will occur in one minute, not so instantaneous but still. Delayed death will cause agonizing dyspnea, headache, convulsions, dilated pupils, and fine froth coming from the mouth and a characteristic smell of bitter almonds can be observed. If the salt is ingested, the symptoms appear in about 10 to 20 minutes till it is acted upon by HCl to liberate hydro uh, hydrogen cyanide gas and then there the effects are same as the hydrocyanic acid. There is also corrosive effect and death is usually due to respiratory paralysis. Chronic poisoning is due to repeated exposure to lethal or non-lethal doses of uh, hydrocyanic acid or cyanide. It occurs in photographers and gilders who, are, who use such materials which contain cyanide. It appears as headache, uh, vomiting, chronic cachexy or wasting and mental retardation. Let's see the fatal dose or period. Fatal period. Now in case of hydrocyanic acid which is pure, 50 to 60 milligrams is required to cause death and 200 milligrams of potassium cyanide causes death. Fatal period, death can be sudden if the gas is inhaled, 
It can take 2 to 10 minutes if hydrocyanic acid is ingested and 30 minutes if potassium cyanide is ingested. Now the treatment of cyanide poisoning will only be effective if it is given immediately because the cyanide cytochrome complex need to be reversed. We do this by giving hydroxycobalamin or methylene blue to convert the hemoglobin into methemoglobin so that cyanide can then react with methemoglobin and, con and convert into cyanomethemoglobin which is non-toxic. Gastric lavage is done with sodium thiosulfate or iron which is followed by potassium carbonate to form Prussian blue which is an inert substance. Emetics can also be given if gastric lavage is not readily available. If inhalation occurs, patient should be removed immediately from the site. 100% oxygen should be given and IV sodium nitrite and sodium thiosulfate should be given for the same reasons as previously described. It converts Hb into methemoglobin and then cyanide reacts with uh, methemoglobin to form cyanomethemoglobin which is non-toxic. Let's see the post-mortem appearances. The post-mortem appearance is the same as asphyxia as we said that death is due to respiratory paralysis. There are two different findings. One is on external view and another is on dissection that is internal. Bitter almond smell can be recognized. There are pink patches on the face and lips etc. There is cherry red lividity. Fine froth can be seen at the angles of the mouth. The eyes are glistening and pupils are dilated. And if death occurs due to seizures, then the rigor mortis will set, set in very early. Now let's see the internal symptoms. Sorry, findings. The smell can be recognized in the stomach, brain, etc. Pink mucous membrane of stomach and post-mortem formation of cyanomethemoglobin can be seen when hemoglobin is oxidized to methemoglobin. Froth is seen in trachea and bron bronchi. Petechial hemorrhages of pleura and pericardium can be seen. If potassium cyanide is the cause of death, there can be slight corrosion of mouth, red gastric mucosa due to the formation of alkaline hematin, and corrosion of stomach wall. It can pose hazards to the one handling the samples and inhaling cyanide from stomach can be deadly for the dissector performing the postmortem. Let's finally see the medical aspects of cyanide poisoning. It can be used for suicidal purposes. It is principal or the perfect poison for suicide. Accidents can happen. Chemists and laboratory personnel are exposed to this when they pour cyanide solutions into sinks containing strong acid residue. Homicidal cases are rare because of the peculiar smell and taste. It has, used, it has been used as cattle poison and in some countries it is used in judicial execution in some weird way that I don't want to explain. You can check it out in the books. That's all about cyanide poisoning. I'm off to sleep. Bye.